Hi, Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're on the ground at the San Jose Convention Center at the Intuit QuickBooks Connect 2015. It's a mouthful, but it's 5,000 people getting together to talk about small business, entrepreneurship, Intuit moving into the clouds, and developers, and, and really the focus is entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, and we've got a really successful entrepreneur in our next segment, Linda, Lindsay Lorraine from Easy Peasy. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. So Easy Peasy. Begs the question, what is Easy Peasy? Let's jump right to it. Yes, yeah, so Easy Peasy, the name really says it all. We're about making meal time and play time less about mess and more about fun. So we've got a few products. Our flagship product is called the Happy Mat. The Happy Mat. It's a silicone placemat and played in one. And I don't have a table here, but they suction. So kids can't toss and throw their plates anymore. So, so how did this come about? We have three boys, so we have identical three-year-old twins and a five-year-old, and my husband one night was fed up with the mess, and out of frustration said someone needs to invent something, kids can't toss and throw. That's great. The next day I started looking, it all happened very fast. So this was March of 2014, we had the idea at dinner, and then we did a Kickstarter and launched last September, so within six months from idea to launch, we sourced the product, and we're manufacturing it overseas in China. Amazing. So. So can you share any numbers in terms of how it's growing? Yeah, so we've sold uh, about 100,000 units. So we've crossed over the, the million dollar mark in gross sales, which is really exciting. And we've got a phenomenal team in our community. We've had all grassroots growth. And so it's just been this organic community and so engaged. And that's my favorite part is kind of the community and the connection we're making. Okay, so there's about a thousand angles that we can go here. So yep. we'll try to get through a few of them, but we okay. could go for like three days. So. Okay. Let's first talk about the Kickstarter campaign, because that's interesting. Everybody hears about Kickstarter. What was that experience like? Yeah, Kickstarter is, well, first it's a lot of hard work. I don't think people realize how much hard work it is. Um, but we wanted to, one, we needed funding and money. We're self-starter. I'm 100% equity older, self-funded. And so Kickstarter, truly, we needed the funding. And we really wanted kind of the community aspect. And it's such a community with Kickstarter. And you have to ask people. It's a little uncomfortable, because right. you're asking friends and family. But it was really kind of the way we started. They kickstarted us. We, our goal was thirty-five thousand. We ended up raising seventy-two thousand, um, exceeded our goal, and then we shipped all of those units out December of last year. How many people? Kind of the average. Yeah, we sixteen hundred, sixteen hundred contributors. Okay. So over three thousand mats for that. Okay. And then we got product December eighteenth and shipped them all out before Christmas last year. And we were in our house, in our living room. We've since moved now. We have a warehouse and an actual headquarters in Castle Rock, Colorado. Right. So, so what was hard about Kickstarter for people that are considering this as a funding option? That maybe think, oh, I just put it up online I and think, the money rolls in. I think everyone kind of thinks, or I'll just post it and it will go viral. Like You need it to go viral. Right, it right. just doesn't really happen like that, right? You have to either have some sort of momentum. And we were at a trade show, the ABC Kids Expo. It's the world's largest, or no, the US largest trade show. We were at that in September, and I strategically did that, so I wanted Kickstarter during the trade show, and we got some really good press there that kind of funded our growth in Kickstarter. Okay. And then it was the sharing and the, you know, the good idea. It helps that it's a really good product. Oh, absolutely, but there's a ton of great products that never see the light yes. of day. And, and, and it, it takes a little bit of luck, a little bit of magic, and a lot of hard work yes. to make these things really happen. So I want to shift gears and talk about your PR success, because, you know, you doing a little research, you've got videos, you've been on TV shows, you've been all over the place, and in, in fact, you're a finalist for winning a Super Bowl ad with a contest that Intuit is doing. So yes. explain to people kind of how that has worked out, the tremendous success and coverage that you guys have got. Yeah, and I think, you know, being at this conference, I think has solidified that we're doing things correctly. I, I think we're different, and it, I'm going to go on a little rant against corporate America and these big companies, but I think there is a comeback that small businesses are coming back. And because we're authentic and we're genuine. I didn't get in this to make a ton of money. I got in it because it solved a problem. Every parent should have one because it makes a difference. And we're really about doing good and giving back. And you know, one example is the special needs community has been a huge community with this. Kiddos with cerebral palsy. And so we are genuine and authentic. And I think that comes through. And so people can relate and want to share it and tell their friends. And right. so it's this word of mouth kind of organic because we're true and we do what we say. Right, right. And you don't get that with like the large organizations. So it's been a lot of that. It's been a lot of hard work. I mean, a lot of hard work. I don't think people realize having your business is... No, it's hard it's, work. It's 
every 18 hour days and right, right. hotels away from my family so I can work. And so I think though it comes back to at the core, we're genuine, we're authentic, we love what we're doing and people can relate to that. So community is a tremendous thing, right? Everybody talks about community, they want to engage with the community, but you've really found a connection, a spark, and you have this engagement. Yes. How is that different than, you know, you've worked the traditional businesses, you were at some big companies before. How is kind of this community aspect in terms of growing a business so different than just kind of the traditional? Yeah, I think when you're smaller and you're more nimble, you, you can listen to people. In corporate America, they can say, we listen, but when you're deal, you know, you have 100,000 employees, you can't move the ship. It takes years to just do anything. Right. Versus us, I'll give you an example is, when we launched, they did, we didn't have beveled edges, so the edges were straight. The only feedback we ever got was our kit could technically peel the corner. All right. So we listened, we adjusted quickly, we beveled the edges, and I think people appreciate that, right? You're listening to your customers. I thought I was going to keep it from the, the liquids from spilling off the edge. They already the do ridge that. On there. They, did they do that a little bit? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> we thought, but so I think it is, it's listening, you know, it's acknowledging it. Right. We check every single email, every post gets a comment from me. You know, so I mean, it, it, we're in it, and we're in it, and people can feel that. Mm -hmm. You know, my team used to think I was crazy because I was like, we have to reply to everyone in every email. And some people have the thing of like, well, you don't have to really apply to everyone. I'm like, they're no different. Like a CEO is no different than the other person who emailed to me, right? Right. right. So we kind of take that approach, and I think people can feel that. So I'm hoping, yeah. Okay, so practical tips, social. I got a thousand platforms. I got LinkedIn, Twitter, yes. Instagram, Snapchat. What's kind of your yes. social strategy? So we were extremely organized. So we have you know calendars that have all of our channels, our mission on each channel, what we want to accomplish. We lay out everything as far in advance as we can, and then we coordinate it. We're actually redesigning our blog because content is. We want to be not only mats. We want to be a place that people come for healthy feeding. And oh, it's in my bag. I could show you. We have a book coming out that's healthy ways to fill your happy mat. Right. And so we, you know, our goal is to even create more content and our website is not only to come products, but you're getting feeding tips. So we've got a feeding and speech therapist on our team full time. She shut down her practice and moved to Colorado. And so she's a huge aspect too, to be able to connect and make a difference in the special needs community. So I would say organization, having a vision and being genuine to that vision, and then making sure everything kind of coordinates, you have the same brand voice, the same messaging across all platforms, right. and being engaged. Right. I mean, there's no point if you're posting and then you're not interacting with the community. You know, so I'm genuinely interacting and I feel like I know these people, it's right. crazy. Right. So Lindsay, obviously a very sharp lady. Um, well, thank you, Gosh, got started let's right. You got started right out of school and one of the, one of the pro, for people of, of our age will know so one of the glad. classic training programs of all time, right? Yes. People are clamoring down there to get to the Ernest and Julio Gallo sales rep job coming yes. out of school. So talk about that experience, what you learned from it, and probably I bet there's lessons you still use today. Oh my gosh. I, you know, my background, I kind of give corporate America a hard time, but I spent my entire career in corporate America. So I worked at Gallo and then I worked at Pfizer. Pfizer was my, the majority of my career. Phenomenal company, and then Humana. And so coming out of school, I never, I never had a vision of being an entrepreneur. You know, some people that's all, since they were eight, they were trying to sell whatever. I've always just, I'm very hardworking and passionate and competitive. I have all the innate characteristics that make entrepreneurship possible. Because I think there are some yeah. that you gotta have. Sort energy of for sure, you're bringing the energy. So, <laughs> um, and so out of school, Gallo, I mean it was similar. I was up at 4 a.m. in the grocery stores before they opened. No one really knew what went on on behind the scenes. Right. And I learned a lot about sales and the sales process and objection handling, all those things that you don't necessarily get taught but you're learning on the job. Right. And so that was a phenomenal, and then Pfizer's training program was great. And I, I went to school, I got my MBA. Uh, I played soccer at Arizona State, so I went and I went back for my MBA. But nothing really teaches you like being in it. Yeah, being on the ground. I went, I mean, I've done every accounting class you can imagine in school, my MBA, and two months ago to, to our CPA, I was like, I get it. Like, I finally get it. You know what I mean? Like, I get debits and credits now, and right, when you're right. in it and you're, it's yours and you're doing your business. And cost you're... accounting, right? You never can actually figure out how much that thing costs. That's oh the magic of cost accounting. That's a whole nother story. Yes. So let's shift gears one more time. Okay. You made the jump. Yeah. What, what, what kind of pushed you over the edge, guided you to, to make that leap? Yeah, so I, so when I started, we had the idea in March. I did both jobs. Sorry, corporate America, I was doing both jobs. At night, when I would get home from work, I would do this job. And so for six months, when I was bringing this to market, I had both jobs. 
we went to the trade show in Kickstarter and we had a really good response and so I came in after the trade show and resigned. I just knew it. I knew I always knew I wanted to resign. I knew it was going well. And my one of my strengths and as a weakness is when I make up my mind, I'm like all in. I don't look back. I like there's no option of it failing. Right, right. So I always went with that. I wanted to have both incomes to, to kind of pay for getting this started. Right. And then once I knew, I saw the market actually like people touching it and feeling it and buyers. There's no from, better feeling, right, than something that you basically burn. Yes. So then I came back and I resigned and I've never looked back. I mean, the best decision I've ever done. And now just to have the freedom. You know, that's my whole goal of this. Like, I never want to send an interview with anyone ever again. Yeah, but you're actually working harder than you ever worked in corporate America. It doesn't even compare. <laughs> it's, but you have tangible results. That's another thing about having your own thing is you do this and you see the result immediately. Right, right. Where corporate America, I work just as hard, not quite just as hard. But it was like not a tangible thing. Like I think I'm making a difference. Right. Like no, now we're making a difference in the world, and I, I feel it every day. Right. Okay. So, tips for somebody that's kind of on the edge. I think they got an idea. Everybody tells them they make great pie, whatever the example yep. is. What would you tell them? Sitting I would say. I would say hard work, passion, perseverance. You know, follow your gut. Stay true to your vision and mission. And if people tell you a no or you can't do this, figure out a way to do it. And so all of those things can, can make it possible. And you can learn a lot of the business tricks, but like those innate quality of just working hard, being the hardest worker, competitive, all of those things matter. So I would just say, put your heart into it, work hard and have fun. That's the other thing is like, I want to have fun. This is my own company. So like, that's my main thing is, I want to be doing all this, but still enjoy what I'm doing. Right. Lindsay Ray. You could go for a long, long time. Easy peasy. Uh, easy peasy dot com. Easy peasy fun dot com. Easy peasy fun. That's the letters, not yep. the words. All right. Thank well, you. thank you for taking ah. a few minutes and congratulations. Hopefully, you get the Super Bowl ad. It's going to be just down the road at, uh, at Levi Stadium. I right? hope so too. Vote for us. We have like one second of voting. Okay, lines. very good. Thank Don't you. run off yet. Jeff Frick here at the Intuit's QuickBook Connects 2015. Thanks for watching.